WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman. Let's just get in that little jar right there, this first one, and go down. <laughs> yeah, baby. Right on. Right on, huh? Nice fish. That's a nice cooking. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Going down. Boom. Oh, yeah. Got him. Now we're having fun. I'm having lots of fun. Anytime I can go fishing, I'm having fun. Yep. First day. See if he's a good enough one to shoot. Let's go see if we can catch him. Okay. Swing back this way and back. This week on the Northwest Outdoorsman. No, I'm kind of glad we decided to stay with this bunch. Good girl. In. In. The Northwest Outdoorsmen are on the hunt for elusive upland birds. But we want you to shoot too. Put in a rock quarry, this would be a good place. Get him. I hate those truckers. <laughs> WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Micklich, Andy's Hilltop Retreat, Herod's Cookhouse. Awesome. Upland bird hunting awesome. is a favorite pastime of many Northwest hunters. Pheasants and quail are abundant in the many agricultural fields. Grouse are found in the vast forested areas. And if you're hardy, there are checkers in the rugged sagebrush country. The Northwest outdoorsmen have hunted these birds since their youth. Hunting dogs and family make trips afield most enjoyable, regardless of bird numbers. Now the guys head to the fields and rocky rims to chase elusive upland birds. So the first spot we went to was down below Spangle, and that was a farmer that uh, the neighbor boy's been hunting on his property, and he'd been some pheasants down there. Earlier in the year, there'd been some huns, and he'd come across a few quails, so we thought we'd go down there and give it a try. It's kind of unique in that it's just kind of a wetland wash that goes right down through some wheat fields in there. We had to park at the end of that little trail because the rest was seeded on both sides, so we didn't want to make the farmer mad, so we parked, walked a ways. It was, it was in a draw there, CRP. You ready? Get that little energy here. The stubble gets about longer than that, and the pheasants were sitting in that last time. This is where we want to be. And a good girl. Run deer. Oh man, we had some deer run across us. Uh, there's, there's in a hurry, eh? I don't know why they run right, right in front of us, but they wanted to get out of there. Probably the dogs, they probably heard and saw the dog. They don't want to get out in a hurry there. That would have been a cool. <laughs> this tree holds a lot. There's a bunch up there. Good job, Jay. Ian. Ian. I like watching the dogs work. I like watching the birds, how the birds react, how they're flighty or they stay, or uh, everything about that. Cade, uh, they moved in two years ago. Within a couple weeks of moving up here, I took him out on a quail hunt and we shot a few quail. Uh, he loves to hunt. He's, he's, he'll go out by himself if he could, you know. Every weekend he calls and says, are you gonna hunt? And do you know anybody who's hunting? Uh, I know Mike because when we moved here, we bought the house next door that he had built. And we both like hunting a lot, so we share that passion. We hunt together so every once in a while. Decent amount, we hunt waterfowl, upland, kind of take each other places, show each other around. You kind of watch them and you see yourself when you were that age. You, were, you know, we, I grew up in a time when you had more freedom at 16 than you know, this, they do around here. But just to see him kind of grow as someone who hunts is uh, you know, fun to watch. So I'm scooting through there. Take a step to your left, Kate. Okay. okay. Oh, Mike. When she goes on, you'll know she's on. All right. Oh, shoot. Dang. That was a rooster. That was a rooster. Another rooster. Here. Here. 
Obviously, we've seen some pheasants that were pretty sketchy. Yeah, a little jumpy. Got me excited, though. <whistles> Dig in deep and run with their heads down. Let's hunt back to the truck. All right. I think you get to a certain point where you've been hunting long enough that it's not about the numbers. It, we had a nice walk. We, we saw some birds. We went through some nice cover. Yeah. You go hunting probably for the dogs. Uh, it's just fun to watch the dogs work. Very rarely do you get to be around an animal who's doing exactly what it was bred to do. They act like something's in here, don't they? I don't know if you could just say they love it, but it just appears that they love it. And it's exciting. Good girl. We now travel to Northeast Oregon for Ron Harrod's chucker hunt. Good girl. Oh, that's better, Richie. Get out of the wind a little bit. We need to find some chucker tracks. Chucker's right here somewhere. Must be going down, huh? Coming up after the break. Those birds had to go back around to the right. Keep her from going around the corner. Hibbert! WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Micklich, Andy's Hilltop Retreat, Harrods Cookhouse. Welcome back to Enterprise Oregon and Ron Harrods Chucker Hunt. I've been wanting to get my dog out chucker hunting, so I had one cold morning and thought, might as well go. Went north to Enterprise, went out on a place that I usually go out and hunt. You can't drive in the bottom, so you have to go along the top of the rim. Can't, I hunt the canyons, it's a big long ridge line, so you can drive a lot along the edge and stop in different places and uh, bail off the side from there. It was a cold, windy day. And it's cold. Uh, this particular day, you know, the wind was blowing pretty hard. And um, I like to hunt when there's a little bit of a breeze because I can cut my dog into it and she can smell the birds. But boy, I tell you what, that wind was cold that day, howling over those rims. And once you got off the side, it wasn't too bad. I'd like to kill a couple. There, there. Oh, that's better, Richie. Get out of the wind a little bit. It's nice down here. We need to find some chucker tracks. Yeah, I had a perfect little snow that morning for tracking chuckers. It had about an inch or two of fresh snow that night. Good girl, good girl. He's on point right here, Richie. Whoa. Looks like they're going up the hill here. The first bunch of birds that come around the corner and my dog Brooke had went on point and I thought they were right there. We looked all the way around and saw the tracks. We went up the hill and they weren't up the hill so we turned around and came down the hill. I like this. Uh, she went right around the corner and uh, the birds came out just before I got there so had to find a different group. Look at there Rich, right into that rock pile there. Thinking about coming around the rim on them but it's not like I haven't killed a chucker before. Rook and I don't go out very often like Hardly ever without getting something. We went around the ridge, come around a rock pile. Brooke went on point, birds started getting up. Good 
Different. I dropped one, kind of moved down in position, and uh, some more birds flushed, and I dropped another one. Different. All right, girl, come on. Come on. Tough rock pile. Come on. Dibbert. Come here. Fetch. Come on. Brooke, come on. Fetch it here. Come on. My dog Brooke's a Weimaraner. She's 11 years old. Pretty much have spent all of our time chucker hunting. She's a chucker dog. We don't do much upland bird hunting of any other kind except chuckers. So she's cut her teeth on chuckers. She's retrieved a couple hundred of them in her lifetime and, and uh, that's kind of her deal. You know, it takes her a couple trips now to get out and get in good shape, get warmed up, but she's still got, you know, a half a day in her and uh, she hunts hard and uh, she's been a really good dog. We hunted some more, tried a couple other different spots, didn't see any tracks. You know, that's chucker hunting for you. You know, you can go into one canyon and you can get into a couple bunches within a quarter mile and then you can walk your rear end off for another five and not see anything. But it was, it was all in all, it was a good day. You know, we had, we had a good time. It's always up. Coming up after the break. Swing back this way and back. Did you retrieve a bird? These rocks are slick, Rich. I got it. They don't have to go anywhere for water. <laughs> WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Micklich, Andy's Hilltop Retreat, Herod's Cookhouse. Welcome back. We now head further south in eastern Oregon, where Howard Herod and nephew Sam Martin hunt for chuckers in the fog on the high breaks of the Snake River. About oh, where I thought we'd run into them again. We decided to go hunting up at some friends of mine, old place called the Agars up at Durban Creek. Is this part of Agars here on this? Yeah. That's why I was curious what that sign said because I think there's a little sliver down there. Been chucker hunting there for about as long as I've started chucker hunting, which isn't a whole long time. Yeah. Been rainy and Sam has a couple side by sides. It's gonna be a nice day. I think chuckers are out feeding. It was wet and mucky and I don't think we'd have got there if we hadn't had them. Oh, get down. Well, so I talked to the landowner that owns it now. We thought we were gonna be battling mostly snow, you know, a few inches of frozen snow, so we didn't think we'd probably be able to drive a pickup up there, so it turned out to be really muddy, so we definitely would have had no chance of getting up there then. But. <laughs> Somebody sure drove up here, it looks like, though. I'm better than a four-wheel drive ticket. You wouldn't have got up there with a four-wheel drive. No, that's pretty cool. So we took two of them up. took one down towards the bottom and left it and then uh, and the three of us jumped in the other one and went back up towards the top. Looks like maybe a week they're yeah. thinking it's going to drop down a little bit. I said uh, maybe we'll get some cold weather one of these days. We decided we'd park one rig down low and then go up to the top and and hunt our just spend time and slowly work our way down low instead of having to worry about getting hiking all the way back out. It'll be hard uh, walking on the hillsides. Yeah, she's like, oh, stop wasting time, let's get going. I like it when those shells say heavy. Definitely shoot better with them, that's for sure. It was a little foggy, but it wasn't real bad. Kind of so coming, like fogs shoot. coming down, and it would lift, and we went around this first little hunt. Yeah, at least one. That's why he was mad, huh? <laughs> Feels good to be chucker hunting, though. Oh, yeah. 
We've jumped chuckers here in this pile of rocks right here before. Chuckers, the first chucker was introduced in 1893, actually, in Illinois. But, um, but they really took on in the West. Nevada, Utah, Oregon, Idaho is where the populations really took off. And they were first hunted in Nevada. Chuckers originally started in Eurasia, Middle East, and the habitats are very similar. They're looking for steep talus slopes, rocky outcroppings, and shrubs that they can find cover under. I think they're a popular game bird because of the difficulty. It's not something that everybody's going to go out and do, you know. There's the old adage for chucker that the first time you hunt them for fun, the next time you hunt them for revenge. When you get out on the landscape, you know, it's the challenge of the hunt that really draws you back. These rocks are slick, Rich, I gotta tell you. Don't slip and fall in there. Hell, yeah, what in the heck? Good girl. Good girl. Can't believe we haven't kicked anything up. Did you see one? Not yet. Kept seeing sign, lots of chucker sign, and kept getting excited every time we'd see it, thinking we were about ready to jump some chuckers. And we kept hiking and kept hiking and never did find them on that ridge line. We were seeing sign, but no birds. So we got through with that little hunt and we kept on going around uh, into this bigger draw and down the side and same thing. A lot of sign, no, no chuckers. You guys seen chucker sign lately? Last time I saw any was up there on that top of that hill there. Every time we've seen you know, sign, it's been right at the the top here. They're probably yeah. going up here and feeding and then coming back here to to roost. If we don't get any to any as we go down here, maybe we need to jump up on top. We sat down for a little bit and had a quick little thinking. break and then we got going again. It's not making much sense right now. Dang fog anyway. So we kind of split up and Sam went a little high and I was down lower and about where I thought they should be. Macy got pretty birdie there for a little bit, and uh, that's when that's when it happened. Three. Coming up after the break. Good girl. Yeah, she did. She was awesome. Wasn't expecting one, I guess. WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Micklidge, Andy's Hilltop Retreat, Herod's Cookhouse. Welcome back to Chucker Hunting in Eastern Oregon. Dang fog anyway. So we kind of split up and Sam went a little high and I was down lower and about where I thought they should be. At that point, we talked about it a little bit and Howard decided to hunt up the one draw and you and I decided to go chase the, that covey of birds and try this area. Macy got pretty birdie there for a little bit and uh, that's, when, that's when it happened. Good bird. Good girl, Mace. I didn't call you fat, Mace. You can bring it to me. <laughs> Come here, Mace. Come here. Good girl. Good girl. Think you can find another one for us? She should, yeah, she might be close to that lowest one. We watched her work for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. That one bird was hidden pretty good on her. And that should be the lowest one, I think. She kept working and finally she got that dang bird, the last bird out of there, so. <laughs> I think it's between us and... Yeah, she did. She was awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Get lucky every once in a while, I guess. <laughs> That's right, especially with a day like today, huh? Good job, baby. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. 
So one way to improve habitat for chuckers is really ensure that during that brood rearing time, there's bugs on the landscape. You gotta make sure that there's forbs, flowering plants that are providing the food for those bugs. It also, when you look at forbs, they provide a great overstory to protect these young chicks from predators above. Pheasants Forever, you know, we started on pheasants and that's where we built coming out of Minnesota, but we're the habitat organization. We do habitat in general. It doesn't matter if it's chucker, pheasant, quail. And the best thing about Pheasants Forever is we're a grassroots organization. We work with local chapters and the money that those chapters raise goes where those chapters want it to go. We do habitat and we get habitat on the ground that's better for all wildlife. No, I'm kind of glad we decided to stay with this bunch. After I was able to shoot those birds, that group of three, we uh, knew that they kept going high. So we were tracking them and following them up. And uh, we almost got clear back up to the side by side up at top. We're walking along there and I looked up and I could see a chucker. Yeah, I got a bird right here, right over past her. Flush him here in a second. I can't believe how close that sucker let her get. So I went up this draw and I never saw anything at all. I went clear back up the rig. About that time I hear Rich and, and Sam and they're shooting and so I stood there and they came back around the hill and, and they went that way. Do we feel like walking that flat out on that side? Well, Sam decided to go on back down and get the other side by side and so Rich and I started back up to the, the rig. I think those are bluebirds. And Maisie, his dog's just uh, sniffing around there and pretty soon this chucker gets up right under my feet. Get him. Shoot. My only chance, I missed it, huh? Get a bird up and miss it. Walk five miles, get up one bird and miss. Now that's, that's not good. That wasn't the first time and it probably won't be the last. <laughs> oh, it is. You know, that's chucker hunting for you, especially for me. I'm not the best shot out there anyways, but I'd 10 times rather do chucker hunting than any other kind of bird hunting. <laughs> it's getting tougher all the time, but we have a good time doing it. It's great. Gosh, you gotta be some birds in here somewhere. Now it's time for another Harrods Cookhouse recipe brought to you by Micklich, the Spokane Spice Company since 1948. Today we are making Harrods Chucker Casserole. Remove chucker breast meat from bones and cut into about one inch pieces. Season flour with Harrods Cookhouse Game Bird and Chicken Seasoning. Dredge pieces and brown in pan. Dice about two cups of potatoes, one cup of carrots, and a half an onion. Mix brown chucker pieces with vegetables, one cup of water, and a can of cream of mushroom soup. Pour mixture into pan, adding more seasoning, and bake for about one hour. A hearty meal all on its own. Oh boy, that's good. For this and other great recipes, visit the Herod Outdoors website. Tune in next week for another great wild game recipe. Out in the sagebrush hills towards the Wahis, there was quite a few chuckers. And so when I was a kid, you know, you know on the teenager and stuff, I got started hunting. And our kids were getting up to the age where we, we could take them. And so we'd uh, load up shells and we'd go out there in the old stomping grounds where I was raised and there seemed to be a lot of chuckers out there and we just had a great time 